Hey, it's Dr. John Terry, the Black Belt Leader, and welcome to the Black Belt Leadership Podcast, where each week I'm giving you tips, tools, insights, and resources to help you become a better version of who you are and what you do as you discover, develop, and deploy your own Black Belt Leader within. Hey, this week I want to talk about naysayers. Now, what do I mean by a naysayer? Well, let me put it this way. The world is full of negative people. Now, we know these people by many names. They're cynics, they're critics, they're pessimists, they're realists, they're misanthropes. That's a big word. But my mom always referred to them as naysayers, those negative people that never have anything good to say, but always see the bad in every situation. Now, by definition, a naysayer is a person who criticizes, objects to, or opposes someone or something. Now, these are the people that distrust other people. They believe everything is done for selfish reasons, and they constantly complain and are putting other people down. These are the negative, cynical, critical people who at times can be somewhat rude. There will always be naysayers. Now, the naysayers are easy to spot because they're the people who are always negative about anything and everything, regardless of the subject matter. They deny, they refuse, they oppose, and they're skeptical or cynical about life in general. Yeah, if you're like me, you know some of those people and they're already coming to mind. Now, naysayers are people who amplify negativity and doubt. They point out all the reasons why you can't and you'll never be successful, and they spend their time every minute of every day spreading doubt and disbelief. You know, and sadly, they're everywhere. There will always be naysayers. Now, naysayers, again, are individuals who constantly express doubt, negativity, and skepticism about your goals, your ideas, or your progress. And as I said just a minute ago, you don't have to look too far behind them. In fact, you may have naysayers living in your household or sitting next to you in the cubicle at work. You know, consider the overly cautious family member or friend who's always warning you about the potential risk or failures of whatever it is you're trying to do. They're always emphasizing to you why your plan for your future success is not going to work And they're always finding why it's going to fail rather than offering encouragement or support. Now, maybe that naysayer for you is a competitive peer who constantly seeks to dismiss or downplay your strengths, your talents, and your achievements. They see your abilities and they poo-poo your abilities. Because of their own insecurity or their own competitive nature, what do they do? They want to make it about them and not about you. And their negativity directed towards you makes it difficult for them to support your efforts or to celebrate your successes. Now, another naysayer that you and I may come in contact to is the realist. Now, a realist believes that they're just being practical, but they often use practicality as a mask for pessimism. These are the people who are frequently focusing on the worst case scenario, and they're going to assume failure is going to be the likely outcome of any endeavor you, they, or anybody else attempts. Failure is what they anticipate. It's what they expect. And I think ultimately, it's what they hope for. These are the people who will douse any spark of creativity with bucket after bucket of water of doubt and disbelief. Now, you also find naysayers in the workplace. That can be that critical boss, that critical team member who is constantly criticizing or negatively critiquing every idea and every effort that you make. Rather than bringing constructive criticism of, why don't you try it this way, they prefer instead to offer doubt, negativity, and discouragement, and oftentimes seeks to embarrass or belittle you in front of others. Now, to me, one of the best places to find naysayers, if you're out looking for them, why you would, I don't know. But if you're out looking for a naysayer, just go to the internet. In social media circles, these trolls thrive on pointing out the flaws and weaknesses of other people. They're the ones that are quickly going to celebrate your failures because it gives them great joy and happiness. They get great amusement out of bringing other people down. Why? I believe they're jealous of the success of other people, and because they haven't achieved success in and of their own, they would rather belittle, humiliate, embarrass, or even cancel those people they secretly wish they could be. 
Now, understand this, who you surround yourself with matters. We've talked about it here on the Black Belt Leadership Podcast before. Some of your so-called friends driven by envy may subtly and sometimes openly criticize your efforts or undermine your confidence, and in doing so, seek to prevent you from succeeding. Why? Because they want to keep you where they are as they are unchanged, nothing being successful in their lives. And when they feel like you're going to move on and leave them behind, rather than changing themselves and working on becoming a better version of themselves, what do they do? They seek to hold you back and prevent you from being successful by talking you out of opportunities to move forward. You know, even a disillusioned mentor can be a naysayer. I mean, think about the mentor who has faced a setback in his or her own life or in their career, and all of a sudden they begin to project those insecurities, those failures, those experiences of not gaining a win onto you, and they're cautioning you of the risks that you're taking because they themselves failed and they didn't learn from that failure. Yeah, again, I say, and I'll say it again, naysayers are everywhere. There will always be a naysayer. But here's the good news. You don't have to believe them. You don't have to listen to them. And you don't have to accept what they say. You know, I like to put it this way. Everybody has an opinion. And most people I know are more than willing to share their opinion at the drop of a hat, even if that opinion is not grounded in truth. Now, oftentimes when I'm talking to audiences about doubt and disbelief and self-deprecation that many of us engage in either accidentally or on purpose, I often remind them of a very simple truth when it comes to the true value of someone else's opinion. And it's this, their opinion and a dollar will buy you a sweet tea at McDonald's and nothing more. That's how valuable most people's opinions are. It has no value. Now, you may be saying, John, I can't even spend a dollar and buy a sweet tea at McDonald's anymore. Maybe that's not the case in this inflationary environment we've been in the last few years. But here's what I can tell you. There is no real value in an opinion that is not rooted in truth. And most naysayers have opinions that are rooted in untruth. Remember, there will always be naysayers. But the truth and the good news is this. You don't have to accept their negativity. Ask my friend, Al Casado. Now, maybe you don't know Al, but let me introduce you to Al. I met Al about a year ago. I'd previously seen him on CNBC, on Fox Business, and other national television shows. He appeared as a financial expert. Brilliant man, and I absolutely loved the opportunity to get to meet him, and Al now has become a friend. Al invited me to keynote his Boom Conference in Dallas earlier in 2024, and I had the privilege of speaking to a number of highly successful financial professionals in the room. You know, I had a great time talking about success foundations from chapter three of my book, The Black Belt Secrets of Success, and the feedback I got from the men and women in the room was just incredible. Now, as a result of that, Al and I struck up a friendship, and he later invited me to one of his famous discovery days. At these discovery days, Al invites financial professionals who are interested in up-leveling their practice to learn some new and innovative strategies to do just that. Al shares some of the things that he's done successfully, some of the things other financial professionals that he's worked with have done successfully, and how he can help the individuals in the room accomplish similar things in their business. But it was at this discovery day I heard Al's inspirational naysayer story. Now, I don't know if I can do the justice that Al does when he shares this story, but let me try Al left a successful career in the military to join Northwestern Mutual, you know, the quiet company, as a financial advisor. So Al learned the ropes and he began to get out and begin selling and he experienced early success in business. Now, after seeing success in business and feeling like he was well on his way to a rewarding career, Al was invited to a meeting with senior management. Expecting to be congratulated for his success, Al was surprised and somewhat taken back to hear from the organization's leadership these words, Al, we don't believe you're cut out for long-term success in these industry. He was told by his leadership mentors that he would probably be better considering another field of work. 
Now, to me, that's one of those ouch moments that you don't want to hear, and that's what Al heard in that moment. Again, remember, there will always be naysayers, and Al found himself in a room with naysayers. So that gave Al a choice. He could either accept their opinion as truth and their belief that he didn't have what it takes to enjoy a thriving, long-term, successful career in the financial services industry. Or Al could choose a different course. He could choose to believe in himself. He could choose to gamble on himself. He could choose to invest in himself and go and prove those naysayers were wrong. Well, guess what Al did? Al chose the second outcome. He chose not to accept the opinion of the naysayer. He bet on himself and he went out on his own as a financial entrepreneur. And guess what happened? Al succeeded. Al continued to set records by helping women achieve financial success. He would host educational workshops and seminars to outline the practical steps women needed to take to achieve more financial independence and success in their lives. And he invited those who needed help in doing that to work with he and his team to make that happen for them. And he and his team would help them implement those financial success steps. Now, the naysayers had told Al when he started in this business, people won't come to a seminar or a workshop if you don't feed them. Well, again, Al believed something different. He believed you didn't have to entice people who truly wanted to help themselves with a rubber chicken dinner. So Al chose not to offer food at his events, but he still filled the room. And Al has been filling the room with interested prospects without feeding them since 2006. Now, I love what Al did after he started seeing success. Al, every year, would send a copy of his 1099s to his former bosses at Northwestern Mutual to show them that their opinion of him was wrong. Now, that's a gutsy move, and I like it. But if you ever get a chance to meet Al, you'll see Al is a gutsy guy. Now, Al wasn't just settled with success. He wanted to go from success to significance and build upon what he was already doing that was successful. So Al set his sights on expanding from in-person seminars and workshops to doing something similar in the virtual world. Once again, the naysayer showed up and gave Al all the reasons why this would not work. Well, Al, it's too expensive. Al, nobody's going to show up to an online event. Al, people are not going to share information over the phone or in a Zoom call. And then guess what happened? The COVID pandemic hit the United States and people couldn't go to in-person events. So where did they show up? They showed up on phone calls. They showed up in Zoom rooms to hear the information Al was sharing. So once again, Al proved the naysayers wrong. Now, today, Al is teaching financial professionals to replicate his own virtual success as they are engaging with clients across the nation who are interested in planning for a more financially secure retirement without ever leaving the comfort and privacy from their home or their office. So what can we learn? What can you and I take away from Al's example that we can apply in our own lives. Remember, there will always be naysayers, but we don't have to listen to or accept what they say as truth. So first, here's one takeaway I get from Al's story. Understand there may be a nugget of truth that we can glean even from the naysayer. So I wanna challenge you to this. Anytime someone has something to say, even if it's negative, listen with an open mind. There may be a nugget of gold hidden in that naysayer negative comment that you can glean, that you can polish and turn into an opportunity to experience more success in your personal life or in your business. The key here is this, don't take their negativity personally, don't allow their doubt to distract you, but listen for the gold that you may find buried in their negative comments. Secondly, here's what I learned from Al. You wanna set boundaries for the naysayers in your life. If people are constantly putting you down, they're discounting what you're doing, or they're draining your energy by their constant negativity, simply put a limit on how much time you're going to spend with those individuals. Now, if you have to be with them because you're married to them, or they're one of your children, or one of a close family members, or a coworker in your business, you can politely steer the conversation away from the topics that bring negativity and let them know that you're not interested in hearing all the negative things they have to say. 
Now, another way you can set boundaries is through controlling the conversation. Understand this, and I teach this in sales and marketing. He or she who asks questions controls the conversation. So if you're asking constructive questions that shift the focus away from the problem and shift it toward possible solutions, you're remaining in control. Let me give you an example. If somebody comes in and says, that won't work, rather than getting in an argument over why it will, simply ask them, well, what do you believe might work in this scenario? Do you see what you've done? You've shifted from the problem to looking for possible solutions and outcomes that can move the conversation forward. Now, again, understand this. You can do what Al did with his bosses, and he used their negativity as an opportunity to reaffirm his goals. Al knew what he wanted to do. Al understood his passion was helping women achieve a better financial successful future than many people had experienced in the past. So what did Al do? He reminded himself of his past successes at Northwestern Mutual. Al reminded himself of why he joined the financial services industry in the first place, and that was to help people, specifically women who were struggling with their money. And Al also re-envisioned how he could continue to do what he had started to do at Northwestern Mutual, but to do it on his own and do it at an even higher level. Al understood Ogmandino's classic mantra, and he continues to live it out, I will persist until I succeed. Now, one more thought on this particular topic. In some cases, when you've got a persistent naysayer that will not stop and they are relentless in their negativity, sometimes you just have to ignore them. Sometimes you have to separate yourself from them because they're nothing more than an emotional drain. If you can't transform their life, as John Gordon says, at some point, you've got to let them get off the bus. Understand this, not everyone's opinion deserves your attention. Let me say that again. Not everyone's opinion deserves your attention. Remember, their opinion and a dollar will buy you a sweet tea at McDonald's, but nothing more. That's the value of an opinion not rooted in truth. So don't give more value to a naysayer's opinion than what it's actually worth. So one more thought on naysayers as we get ready to wrap up this week's teaching. It is important in a world of naysayers to surround yourself with positive supporters. This is one of the way that you negate the impact of the naysayer, and that's by spending time with people who believe in you, people who will support your vision, people who will offer you their assistance, their support, and their guidance, and will lift you up rather than tear you down. Understand that successful people are going to surround themselves with people who continually remind them of all the reasons they can achieve rather than all the excuses why they can't. You want to be around I can people and not I can't people. So it's very important you choose who you let in your inner circle. Now, one of the things I admire about Al is this. Al used the skepticism of other people as a motivation to prove them wrong. Doubt other people try to put on you if you use it the right way can fuel determination and persistence that lead to success. And remember, there will always be naysayers. But the good news is you don't have to accept their negativity. Now, I will say this about naysayers. One thing about naysayers that is a positive. A naysayer can serve as an opportunity for growth because they are going to push you to strengthen your resolve. They're going to push you to refine your vision and their doubts can fuel your determination and strengthen your dedication and as a result of that, it's going to make you more resilient, more committed, and even more resourceful than you were before. Remember, when you're faced with a naysayer, don't forget you get to define what you believe and why. Let me say that again. When you are faced with a naysayer, you get to define what you believe and why. Not every opinion is worth your attention. You get to choose the thoughts you think and the corresponding actions that you take. Never forget that as a black belt leader. 
How you think is how you become. Remember, as you think, you become. So make sure that you are in control of your thoughts. So how do you do that? Successful people constantly remind themselves of the skills they're honing, the progress they're making, the wins they've already experienced, and they're always looking forward to what's next. Success breeds success. You can't plant seeds of success and get doubt from that. So keep planting seeds of success. Continually remind yourself of the skills and talents and abilities that you're developing and honing to a razor's edge. Continue to remind yourself of the progress you're making, looking back at where you started, where you are now, and how much closer you are to where you want to be, and make sure you're celebrating the wins and remembering the wins so you can replicate those in the future. Because Tony Robbins says it well, what gets rewarded gets repeated. Now, again, success breeds success, and this is why personal growth is so important. When you're daily becoming a better version of who you are and what you do, you're learning, growing, and becoming a better version of you. That is important because as you're growing, it serves as a constant reminder to you that you are doing what is necessary to become more successful. Every single day, we learn, we grow, we improve, we mature, and we focus on becoming better than we were the day before. That keeps us moving forward, focused on what's next, and looking for the opportunity to say yes and I can, because when we move into I can, now it's I will. Because when we start believing I can't, I can't leads to I won't. So I can leads to I will, I can't leads to I won't. Be an I can, I will person and you can overcome the impact of the naysayers in your life. Now, when you're focused on personal growth, understand this. As you're daily becoming a better version of yourself, what happens as a result of that? It's going to fuel your black belt confidence that's going to allow you to stay in the room, keep fighting the good fight and experience more wins in life. That is what's important as a black belt leader. Again, remember, there will always be naysayers, but the good news is you don't have to accept their negativity. I'm Dr. John Terry, the black belt leader. Thanks for joining me and have a great day.